Welcome to our second lecture in Chapter 5, 5.2, where we'll be verifying trigonometric identities. <clears throat> We're going to look at some strategies, um, specifically how to verify identities by working one side of an equation or by working both sides. <clears throat> So the important part, obviously, if we're going to verify identities, is to make sure you know them. So make sure you learn all the fundamental identities. The idea here is whenever you see either side of a fundamental identity, it should kind of recall the other side. For example, if you see sine squared plus cosine squared, hopefully that's by now creating this um, rec recognition that that is equal to 1. It's also important that for things like this, for each of the identities that you are um, aware of or can manipulate them to create alternative forms. For example, cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1 can also be written as cosine squared equals 1 minus sine squared. <clears throat> when you're working with uh, verifying identities and you have an equation, Pick the side of the equation that looks more complicated because we'll be simplifying that. And then that usually um, helps us to um, create in the simplification to create the other side, which hopefully is more simple. Um, this is a very common tactic or strategy, and that is just to write all of the trig functions in terms of sine and cosine. For example, if there's a tangent, you would rewrite that as sine over cosine. Um, and then once you've got everything in sine and cosine, then just using algebra to simplify. Uh, if there's any factoring, do this. If there's any other kind of algebra stuff, do it as well. <coughs> Excuse me. This is one of the challenging parts of, of identities because students maybe used to working with x, but when they see sine of x or sine of theta, it, it's not quite as easily recognized as the variables that you've been working with um, previously. For example, if, um, if you saw x squared plus 2x plus 1, you might realize that's x plus 1 squared, but you may not quickly realize that sine squared x plus 2 sine x plus 1 is the same thing as sine x plus 1 squared. So it, it, it takes some practice to get used to these, um, but notice that this form, sine squared x plus 2 sine x plus 1, is really similar to x squared plus 2x plus 1. And so um, it, it's the same formula. And so getting used to that is just going to happen through um, doing lots of homework problems. Um, <clears throat> the sum or difference of two trig expressions. Um, these can be found in the same way as any other fraction or rational expression, just simply using a common denominator. Here we have 1 over sine plus 1 over cosine. Again, this freaks a lot of students out. They're like, how do I find a common denominator there? Well, imagine this was 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3. You find the common denominator there where they're not multiples of each other by simply multiplying them. So if this was a, a 1 half plus 1 third, uh, 2 times 3 is 6. So the common denominator here is sine times cosine, which is just sine theta cosine theta. Um, and, the you know, so you'd have to change the first fraction, 1 over sine, and to the common denominator by multiplying top and bottom by the missing factor cosine, cosine over cosine. And the second factor, you do the same by multiplying by sine over sine, because that's the missing factor in the common denominator. And so that's what you see here. <clears throat> the first term, 1 over sine, is multiplied by cosine over cosine because we're multiplying by a, a multiple of 1, a factor of 1, so it's not changing the value. And here again, in the second term, we multiply by sine over sine, and then we get this common um, denominator fraction here. As you select substitutions, Keep in mind the side that you're not working on, the side that you're not changing, because this is this represents your goal. This is what you're trying to get to. For example, here, <clears throat> we might work on the left side of the equation, tangent squared x plus 1 equals 1 over cosine squared x. But while we're working on that, <clears throat> we've got to remember that we're trying to get to cosine. 
So we're trying to find an identity that relates those two trig functions, tangent and cosine to each other, or something that's common between them. Since secant equals one over cosine, and there's an identity secant squared equals tangent squared plus one, it seemed like secant would likely be the best function or the best link between these two sides. <clears throat> Another common um, algebraic thing to do is thinking of complex conjugate, conjugates. So if an expression contains one plus sine x, multiplying both the numerator and denominator by its conjugate, one minus sine x, would give one minus sine x squared, which could be replaced with cosine squared x, okay? Um, similar procedures apply for one minus sine x, one plus sine, cosine x, and one minus cosine x. So <clears throat> if you see one of these, this is a strategy that you can use to try to manipulate um, the equation or one side of the equation um, to make it look like the other, okay? Now be careful, a common mistake students use is they're so used to algebraic solutions that they try to use the same methodology for verifying um, uh, identities. And this doesn't work because you're not solving the equation, you're trying to make one side look like the other. So be careful, you cannot add the same term to each side, that doesn't work. And you cannot multiply each side by the same term. Um, these should not be used when working with identities. <clears throat> so the <clears throat> most common thing that we do to avoid that problem is only work one side of the equation. And that kind of keeps us from trying to make um, work both sides to get them to match. Okay, <clears throat> so that's how we're going to start out first. We're just going to work one side of the equation. The other thing I have to tell you is that these verifying identities it's not really um, a science. You can't do the same thing every time. It's more, we say it's more of an art, um, more like a game. You have to kind of play around with it, um, try things out. Imagine it's like a video game that you're trying for the first time, <clears throat> maybe moving through rooms, etc. You're trying different things to see what works. And a lot of times you'll try things and they don't work and you have to start over. So let's look at our first one. <clears throat> verify that the following equation is an identity. Well, the right side of the equation looks a little bit more complicated than the left. And we normally want to pick um, the more complicated side. So let's work with the right side, okay? So we have cosecant theta <clears throat> times cos cosine theta plus sine theta. What's something I could do to make this um, simpler? Well, you know, one of the basic things, I have sine and cosine inside the parentheses, I could rewrite cosecant in terms of sine or cosine, and cosecant is equal to one over sine. So that's one of the strategies, one of the most common strategies is to get everything in terms of sine and cosine, and then try to simplify from there. And that seems like a good strategy here, since we already had cosine and sine, and just one term on the right. Notice we're not touching the left. We are only manipulating the right side, and we're going to try to rewrite the right side so it looks like cotangent theta plus 1. Okay, so we've rewritten cosecant as 1 over sine. Now we're going to multiply through, you know. Now you can use some of the things that you do with solving algebra equations, which is like get rid of parentheses, distribute, factor, or multiply through. <clears throat> Excuse me. So if I multiply through, I get cosine over sine plus sine over sine. Well, this is one, and cosine over sine is cotangent. So I've actually got my answer already, okay? Now I want you to notice the notation here, and this is very common, and it's something that you should do. As you are, um, <clears throat> as you are, um, manipulating the original equation and trying to simplify it, write the rule or identity or the strategy. Here's an identity, cosecant equals one over sine, next to um, each line where you're using it. So it's kind of like the reference point for what happened here. How did you go from cosecant times cosine plus sine 
to this one over sign. Oh, I use this identity. How did you go from this product to this? Sum. Oh, I use distribution. Okay. And then how do you get from this, um, this product of fractions to this last um, expression, which is our answer? I used again um, this identity, this quotient identity. Okay. So not only are you going to walk through this, but your documentation should identify what you're doing at each step, either again naming the math property or function you're doing, or, I, or any identities from trig. <clears throat> Okay, verify that the following equation is an identity. Tangent squared x times 1 plus cotangent squared x equals 1 over 1 minus sine squared x. Okay, I've highlighted the left side in yellow, and that's what I want you to focus on. I got this big paw up there, so I want you to pause the video and see if you can rewrite the left side of the equation to me. <clears throat> to be equal to the right, which is 1 over 1 minus sine squared x. Okay, that way you get a little practice here. So I think the first thing I would do here is I would go ahead and multiply through and get rid of the parentheses. Okay, just doing distribution. Okay, this is the left side. We get So we get tangent squared plus tangent squared cotangent squared. Hmm. Well, I know that cotangent squared is 1 over um, tangent squared, so I would rewrite cotangent squared as 1 over um, tangent squared because that will allow me to, when we're multiplying reciprocals, that is equal to 1. 1 fourth times 4 is, is 1. So that's an easy simplification there. So by rewriting cotangent squared as 1 over tangent squared, I can see the second term, the tangents are going to cancel out, and I'm just going to get 1 there. Okay. Now, because this is just um, multiplying, we don't write any kind of rule here like distribution, etc. We do write distribution because sometimes it's confusing when we have parentheses with terms that are not variables like we're used to. Well, what do you know about tangent squared plus 1? Hopefully that's triggered the idea that, hey, that sounds like one of those identities, specifically a Pythagorean identity. And finally, um, we get, when we rewrite tangent squared plus 1 as secant squared, we can see that um, we know that secant squared is 1 over cosine squared. And then that's kind of, now it's starting to trigger, right? Cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. And we've manipulated this before. Is that the manipulation? Yeah, it is. Cosine squared equals 1 minus sine squared. So this is taking um, sine squared plus so cosine squared equals 1 and re-manipulating that equation to find a substitution for cosine squared. And now we've got the right side of the equation, so we're done. We have verified that the left side, by simplification and using other known identities, can create is the same as the right side. Okay, hopefully you did okay on that, but again, this is just practice, so we're going to do a few problems here. Verify that tangent of t minus cotangent of t divided by sine t cosine t equal, equals secant squared t minus cosecant squared t. Okay, oh my, <clears throat> excuse me. So again, I've highlighted the left side, that's the side I want you to work with. And again, you see a big pause. Hit the pause button and try to work the left side of the equation and make it look like the right. Okay? So this is an interesting one. Tangent is sine over cosine and cotangent is um, cosine over sine. Um, but notice that we have a difference in the numerator and a common denominator. So uh, one thing I might do here is write this as two fractions, tangent over the denominator minus cotangent over the denominator. Okay? And that's just basic fraction theory. I don't know that I would write this here, but it might help you to remember that, that A minus B over C is the same as A over C minus B over C that when we have common denominators, we can combine the numerators. 
Well, now I think it would help to rewrite tangent as sine over cosine and cotangent as um, cosine over sine because I, we can now see that we can probably cancel out some of the um, sines and cosines if we do that. Okay. <clears throat> well, they've rewritten it in a way that probably makes that a little bit easier to see. Notice that um, tangent over sine t cosine t is the same thing as tangent times 1 over sine t cosine t. And I can understand why they would do that because now if I substitute sine over cosine for tangent and cosine over sine for cotangent, I can now see the parts that are going to cancel out. Like, for example, in the second term, the cosines are going to cancel out. And in the first term, the sines are going to cancel out. Again, I've rewritten, I've written my identities here, the quotient identities that I've substituted in. And so notice when this happens, I get 1 over cosine squared minus 1 over sine squared. Hey, look where I am. Cosine, 1 over cosine squared is the same as secant squared, and 1 over sine squared is the same as cosecant squared. So I did verify that this identity is indeed true, and um, we're off to the next. Verify that the cosine of x divided by 1 minus sine x is equal to the quantity of 1 plus sine x all over cosine x, that this is indeed an identity. And there's our giant pause. Again, hit the pause button, and this time see if you can rewrite the right side of your equation. Hopefully you've noticed from earlier in this lecture, there was a strategy that mentioned whenever you have 1 plus or 1 minus sine or cosine x, what to do there. So try that and see what happens. Hit the pause button and see if you can do it. All right. So the strategy said that whenever you see 1 plus sine x in a fraction or rational expression, try multiplying the top and the bottom by 1 minus sine x. That that will create, um, with a conjugate pair, um, 1 minus sine squared x, which is, can be substituted, um, cosine squared x can be substituted. Okay? So here we're just multiplying by a factor of 1. Whenever you multiply by the same thing over the same thing, it's equal to 1. So we're not changing the value of the, of the expression or equation. Okay. <clears throat> when we multiply the numerator, notice we get 1 minus sine squared x. In the bottom, we don't get anything different. We could go through that, but I would leave it for now because we might remember that cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. So 1 minus sine squared actually equals cosine squared. Now I can see that I have um, cosine times cosine in the numerator. That's what squared means. And a cosine in the denominator um, also multiplying. So I can cancel one of those cosines out. And I get cosine x over 1 minus sine x, which is indeed the equation on the left side, the expression on the left side of the equation. Okay? Not so bad. Let's try one that's a little bit more difficult. Sometimes both sides of the equation look complicated, and they are complicated. And so sometimes we actually have to work both sides of the equation, not at the same time. We work one side until we get a simpler answer, and then we work the other side trying to get to that same simpler answer. So we're trying to find a common third expression that's simpler than what we originally saw. Okay, so let's look at this. Verify that secant alpha plus tangent alpha divided by secant alpha minus tangent alpha is equivalent to 1 plus 2 sine alpha plus sine squared alpha over cosine squared alpha. Well, I can already see some things on the right, but we're going to begin with the left side. You can try this if you want. Hit pause. I didn't put the pause button here because it's a new thing. We're going to work both sides. But it certainly doesn't help hurt for you to go ahead and try it on your own first. In fact, that's probably one of the best strategies for learning is to try something and fail and then learn where you fail. 
All right, so we're working with the left side. So notice the first step here, we've multiplied it by cosine alpha over cosine alpha. Why? Why would we do that? How would we even come up with that idea? Well, secant is 1 over cosine, and tangent is sine over cosine. So notice that secant and tangent both have the same denominator, which is cosine, which in a way will allow us to um, simplify this because it's kind of getting rid of those fractions if we convert them into fractions. Okay? Here we've just multiplied through secant times cosine plus tangent times cosine over secant cosine minus tangent cosine. To me, the next step would be to convert both secant into um, 1 over cosine and tangent into sine over cosine. <clears throat> Here they've, um, they've identified that a function times its reciprocal equals 1 as opposed to converting um, secant into 1 over cosine. I would do it a little bit different because it's more obvious. This looks like a separate identity, but it's fine. It's really the same thing. So notice they've already substituted in 1 for secant alpha cosine alpha. And again, secant is 1 over cosine. 1 over cosine times cosine is going to be 1. So that's fine. In the second um, term in the numerator and the denominator, they've converted tangent into sine over cosine. And you're starting to see here that what's going to happen is that the cosines are going to cancel out in both of those terms. And that's how they came up with this first step, recognizing that secant and tangent both had the same denominator. Hey, let's multiply the numerator and denominator of the whole expression by that and then start simplifying. And so we get to a pretty simple answer, which is 1 plus sine alpha over 1 minus sine alpha. That seems like a good stopping point. And now we have a target for reworking the right side of the equation. Okay? Here's the right side of the equation. The first thing we did was in, um, is factor the numerator. So we have sine squared plus 2 sine plus 1, which is the same as 1 plus sine alpha squared, all over cosine squared. So that one is it's pretty standard. It, it's pretty straightforward. But now what can we do? Hmm, what do you think? Well, we do have 1 plus sine alpha in the numerator, but it's squared. So would we multiply the numerator and denominator by 1 minus sine alpha squared? Hmm. So I don't really know. So I'm just going to try something. Okay, when I don't know what to do, I try something. I have lots of paper on hand so I can kill lots of trees, etc. Okay, ah, look at this. Instead of multiplying both the numerator and denominator by 1 minus sine squared alpha, I mean, yeah, 1 minus sine alpha squared, which is different, um, they converted the denominator, of course. Cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1, so cosine squared equals 1 minus sine squared. That was actually a smart choice because I remember that our last, uh, that the left side simplification was like 1 plus sine over 1 minus sine. So let's get it all in terms of sine. That's not a bad idea. Now, how can we get rid of this? Well, remember that 1 minus sine squared is the difference of two squares. So we can factor the denominator into 1 plus sine alpha and 1 minus sine alpha. When you have the difference of squared terms, 1 squared is 1, sine squared is sine squared, and a minus between them, we can factor this into a sum and a difference of the square roots of each piece. The square root of 1 is 1, the square root of sine squared is sine. And now I can see it because 1 plus sine alpha squared is 1 plus sine alpha times 1 plus sine alpha. So one of those factors will cancel. And I'm left with the same thing that I found on the left side. So the identity is indeed verified. Okay. 
So notice how we did that. We reworked one side, ignoring the other until we got it to some place that looked pretty simple. Then we went back and reworked the other side for not necessarily forgetting, and I forgot a little bit, but look, really thinking about this new simplified third expression that we're going to work to. Okay. So let's look at one more problem. This is an application problem, just so you can see how this might show up in the real world. Maybe some of you are thinking about being engineers. So let's look at the Pythagorean identity um, in electronics. Tuners and radios select a radio station by adjusting the frequency. A tuner may contain an inductor, which is a piece of the circuitry, L, and a capacitor, another piece of the circuitry, C. At time t, the energy stored in the inductor is given by L of t equals k sine squared 2 pi f t. And in the capacitor, it's given by C of t equals k cosine squared 2 pi f t, where f is the frequency of the radio station and k is a constant. The total energy in the circuit is given by E of t equals L of t plus C of t. So the energy in the circuit is all the energy in the inductor plus all the energy in the capacitor. And our challenge here is to show that E is a constant function. So we want to see that L of t plus C of t um, can simplify into something that is simply a constant that's not variable. We have some diagram here of the basic circuitry. So let's substitute in L of t, um, this formula for L of t here, and this formula for uh, K, um, C of t here, and see what happens. Okay, so there's our equation. We want to simplify this and see if we can get it down to a constant formula, or a con yeah, a formula which equals a constant. Well, hopefully you notice right away that I have sine squared plus cosine squared. And what does that equal? Well, it equals 1. But we're not quite there yet to apply that because we have multipliers in front. We have a common factor of k. So let's factor that out. And now I can see that I have sine squared plus cosine squared. And um, remember that that only works if the angle is the same. And I actually have the same angle, 2 pi f of t, 2 pi f t f times t, excuse me. So of course, um, everything in the brackets equals 1, and therefore our equation, our energy in is just simply the constant, and we have um, va validated that e of t is a constant function. So that's the end of our lecture today. It was a little bit longer than I had hoped, um, but this is a challenging part. Do lots of these problems, trial and error, and remember this isn't a science, it's kind of an art with a little bit of science background.